Good morning, Happy Valley, and welcome back to another edition of the Penn State 365 podcast. I'm your host, Richie Schneider, joined by Dylan Callan Crowley, our beat writer, our um, Swiss Army knife, Mr. Do It All for our site. Um, Dylan, some exciting news today. Uh, Penn State landed another big time transfer portal guy in uh, AJ Harris, who's currently ranked number 15 in the transfer portal rankings for rivals. A yep. former class of 2023 kid from Alabama who was also ranked number 41 overall in his class and a top five cornerback prospect. Um, tell me a little bit about, about the, how this one came about and um, how Penn State was able to land another big name. Yeah, well, first, I mean, people have been asking now for weeks, right, for James Franklin for Penn State to be aggressive in the transfer portal. And mm -hmm. they're getting their wish. I, I, I had that tweet yesterday. Um, and and I, uh, before we go on to Harris, I, I think it's worth knowing that Penn State can be aggressive in the portal here and still stick to you know their 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 beliefs, their values without compromising too much. They're being aggressive, but they're targeting the guys they think are going to fit the program. Mm -hmm. So they're going to hit on some of these guys. Obviously, they're going to miss on some of them. Uh, not everybody who visits is going to end up committing. But AJ Harris is one of those guys who ended up visiting, ended up committing to Penn State, picking the Nittany lines over up. Uh, Primarily Auburn and Kentucky. Auburn was the favorite early on in this recruitment because uh, Harris is a Phoenix City, Alabama native, uh, mm -hmm. former uh, home of um, uh, former Nittany Lion Christian Campbell, another uh, cornerback, and then uh, to Marion Parker, a 2024, uh, sorry, 2023 prospect who committed decommitted end up at Clemson also uh, mm -hmm. from Phoenix City. So P Penn State has some familiarity down there in Phoenix City. But, yeah, Penn State, you know, this was a guy that they kind of ha have been keeping their eyes on the portal since he entered. And uh, they, they were always – not always, but they were going to be a player in this recruitment. They, they were able to get him on campus this week for a visit. Everything went well on that visit. Um he, he wasn't really communicating a ton with Kentucky, I'm told, uh, towards the end of it, uh, which is kind of knocked out the Wildcats. And I know people are worried about Auburn and NIL, and perhaps, you know, Auburn could have came in here and offered uh, Harris quite a bit of money to come play for the Tigers. Uh, but um, the Tigers are dealing with a couple of internal roster management issues, it sounds like, and need to use their NIL towards that more so than players outside the program right now. So that benefited Penn State as well. Penn State's NIL is, you know, obviously slowly improving, but still not, you know, going to match that of an SEC program like Auburn. So uh, the Nittany Lions perhaps lucked out a little bit there with the Auburn uh, situation. But uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how it gets done. And all that matters is that A.J. Harris is going to be a Nittany Lion. And that's a big pickup for James Franklin, Terry Smith, and uh, Tom Allen, to say the least. Yeah, for sure. Now, um, I, a couple of questions. I guess the first one, uh, where do we kind of see him fitting in? Or actually, no, let's go back to this. Why, why did he leave Georgia in the first place? Was it just a matter of playing time? Or I know the secondary coach from Fran Brown obviously yeah. left too. So I think Fran leaving definitely uh, played a factor in as well. Uh, I also, from what I have gathered, uh, believe it, it sounded like they wanted to move him to safety. Uh, okay. Now. You know, I don't think it's a thing that, hey, you're not talented enough to play cornerback. I think it's more of that Georgia defensive back room is absolutely mm -hmm. stacked uh, to the ceiling. So I guess the Bulldogs thought that maybe his best way to play in time was going to be at safety going forward. But it sounds mm -hmm. like he wants to stick at cornerback. Fran Harris leaving probably doesn't help as uh, help. I mean, probably didn't help Georgia's case either in keeping mm -hmm. Harris around. But uh, ultimately, he entered the transfer portal, and now he's going to come to Penn State and have a chance to make it an immediate impact for the main lines. Mm -hmm. So now eight games, eight tackles last year as a true freshman. Uh, where do we kind of see him fitting in? We know, obviously, Penn State's losing a couple corners in Kaylin King and Johnny Dixon and, and even Daquan Hardy. Um, but they do have some young up-and-comers, too, because yeah. we've seen Cam Miller kind of stand out at times. We've seen even uh, Zion Tracy stand out yeah. at times, too. Do, do we think he's just an automatic starter, or...? Or should push for uh, starting time? I wouldn't. I would never say automatic starter, but I think there he is going to be absolutely a part of that cornerback. Uh, you know that main quarterback group, whether he's a starter or whether he's you know first off the bench, he's mm -hmm. going to be a guy who plays a lot for Penn State next year. You mentioned Cam Miller. Cam Miller. You mentioned Zion Tracy. 
Those mm-hmm. two are absolutely going to play a ton for Penn State in 2024. They have a lot of hopes, high hopes for both of those guys. And uh, yeah, will, will he be an automatic starter? No. Do I think he has a pretty good chance of being a starter for the Nittany Lions next fall? Absolutely. Okay. And then uh, the other thing I want to ask you before we move on from Harris, um, where, why, what is going on like with Penn State and Alabama? Like they just they recruit the state really well, and it's just so far away. Yep. It doesn't it, it? I can't make it make sense right now. Yeah, it it really you know is one of the more intriguing pipeline pipelines being built by Penn State is that they yes they haven't been able to land every kid that they recruit out of Alabama, but they consistently cycle after cycle go into Alabama and up. Uh, in top fives for kids. Uh, yeah, you're not going to land them all, but uh, you know, that that's a state that gets probably overlooked quite a bit by people up North, but that's a state that get that produces a ton of talent. So if you can continue to build connections in Alabama, you're never going to be, I mean, that's never going to be a bad thing, especially out mm-hmm. of Phoenix city. It's, it seems like Phoenix city is producing, you know, uh, four, high four star, five star after high four and five star every year. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it is one more interesting uh, pipelines being built. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, Penn State also landed a uh, walk-on transfer who's actually a former five point five three star in Jordan Meyer yeah. from Wisconsin, linebacker slash defensive end slash edge rusher. I don't yeah. I don't really know what to categorize him because we had him as a defensive end. He played edge rusher, but then Wisconsin's roster lists him out of, out of linebacker, so it's a weird type of role there. Yeah. Yeah, from what I've heard, it, you know, with him at Wisconsin, it was just he didn't really fit what that new coaching staff was trying to do schematically going forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was best for both to part ways. And now he'll come to Penn State, be a walk-on. Perhaps he earns a scholarship down the road. But, I mean, either way, that's a really good uh, walk-on to have as in part of your program. He's going to okay. be somebody that I think we see, uh, you know, play, whether that's, you know, late – in games defensively, or becomes a special teams ace. I mean, Penn mm-hmm. State did just lose defensive end Jake Wilson, who was a big special teams player for them uh, the last few years as well. So perhaps he steps yeah. in that Jake Wilson role. Uh, but either way, I mean, you can't really uh, complain when you have a, a kid who had that high of a ceiling just, a, what, a year ago? Yeah. Uh, a three-star kid, multiple power five offers. Mm-hmm. Uh can't really complain when you get those type of kids as walk-ons. Yeah, top 25 kid from Pennsylvania as a walk-on. You, you really can't complain there. Uh, uh, we are recording this uh, a little bit early on Saturday uh, before A.J. Harris officially committed. But, you know, we, we, we talked about mm-hmm. on the board how strongly we felt that A.J. Harris was going to eventually be a Nitty Lion. We were uh, on top of this recruitment uh, since Wednesday, I believe, uh, we were among the first to really report that he was, uh, you know, on campus. Penn State was in a really good position to land him. Uh, mm-hmm. Kind of eliminated Kentucky from that group and during that post and talked about that. It was down to Penn State and Auburn at the time, which it proved to be. Um, but, yeah, with Nolan, I, he entered the transfer portal this week, and I, I, I got a strong sense from one source that Penn State was – going to be probably the team to beat pretty quickly in this recruitment. Uh, you know, Rucci, f- former five-star kid, didn't play a ton in his three years at Wisconsin. Uh, yeah. Wisconsin has a really good tackle named Jack Nelson, who's set to return next year as well, which mm-hmm. kind of forced, I think, Rucci into the transfer portal. He still has to get a little bit stronger, I'm told, but there's still plenty of potential there. Will he step in and be a starter for Penn State next season? I don't expect that to be the case. But I, he is definitely, you know, somebody who still has a, ceil- a high ceiling that can be reached. Uh, perhaps he earns, you know, earns a starter role mm-hmm. by next fall or sometime next fall. But, uh, yeah, I, I think if Penn State can get Rucci, that would be a great addition to uh, their offensive line room, add really nice depth to that position. Obviously, they had a commitment from uh, D2 shorter offensive lineman Anthony uh Heron, Alan, uh, Alan Heron. Uh, sorry, yeah. What did I say? Yeah. Uh, Alan, <laughs> Alan, uh, yeah. Alan Heron, Heron, whatever it may be, who eventually flipped to Maryland during the early signing period. If they can go out and get Rucci to replace him, I, I think that's a, a huge upgrade for them. Um, yeah. And, you know, if, if they didn't lose that commitment, 
they may not be in the position to land a guy like Ruchi, who I think still has the potential to, you know, become a pretty good starting offensive tackle uh, wherever he may end up. If that is in Penn State, uh, so be it. But, uh, yeah, that is definitely going to be something we're watching here. Uh, you would figure they'd love to get him in for the spring period. Uh, classes begin on Monday. They have a little bit of, they have about a week of wiggle room after that. So, uh, anybody they're going to add here is going to be coming in the next seven to 10 days. Yeah, for sure. Now I, I want to pick your brain a little bit because you did mention that you're not sure he would be a starter, but yeah. Penn state is losing. their starting left tackle yeah. in fashion new and they're starting right tackle in Keenan Wallace. Right. I know drew Shelton's probably pencil penciled in and correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, penciled in at one of those starting spots. Who would yeah, you have I would, at that I would other imagine spot? he. I would imagine he plays the left tackle next year. Uh, or right now, we were we would be projecting him to be Penn State's starting left tackle. Okay. Next so who would be right tackle in your opinion? Right tackle. Richie? That that is where it gets interesting because Peach Ball we saw Anthony Donka play yeah. extensively at right tackle and he did really well. He he was one of Penn State's highest graded uh, players on the offensive line per football pro football focus may have been the highest. Uh, I had an article on the bright spots from that peach ball loss, and he was one of those bright spots. After seeing what he did in that game, after we, we've been hearing from Phil Trowan, from James Franklin, about his development since enrolling on campus, uh, how much going to camps has helped him in the past, leading mm -hmm. up to when he was enrolling. Uh, this is a kid who absolutely could, could factor in at that right tackle spot next year. And, uh, you know, it would probably be, between him and 2023 signee Javen Williams right now for that right tackle spot uh, for the Nittany Lions next fall. Yeah, definitely going to be an interesting year next year. New OC, new tackles, uh, new new cornerbacks. Yeah. Um, it's it's new DC. Like it's going to be a very interesting year for Penn State. Uh, Absolutely. Also, probably two new uh, defensive ends as well. Um, I yep. didn't mention that. But the good news is they did return both their defensive tackles. So I didn't want to hit on this before we sign off today. Um, Devon Ellis is returning and um, Hakeem Beeman. Um, yeah. How big of an uh, addition, I shouldn't even say additions, how big is it that they're both returning? Yeah, I mean, sometimes uh, the best roster management moves is retaining your, you know, your best players. And for Penn State to retain those guys, and it seems like – it seems very likely Kazai Izard is also going to be returning. Uh, Izard mm -hmm. is going to also be returning this upcoming uh, season. I mean, that's huge for Penn State because defensive tackle, you had, you came out of that peach ball wondering if is Penn State going to lose both Ellie's and Beeman. And then that would have made, you know, DT quite a, a little bit of a question mark going in the offseason, something they had to address in the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking Penn State returning. Um, <clears throat> their top four defensive tackles most likely for the 2024 season, which is only going to help, you know, sh keep that defensive line going at the same rate it was this year, especially against the run. Those guys were a huge part of that. And then, yes, you're losing Chop Robson and Disa Isaac, but the die nine down a sudden is returning. He's, I think, primed for a big breakout in 2024. Uh, mm -hmm. You have a mean Vanover. Uh, you have Jamil Lyons, who I think is in for a big 2024 season as well. Uh, yeah. Zariah Fisher, that that defensive line room may not be to the level it was this past season, but this past season's defensive line room may be one of the best in Penn, State his, Penn State's history. But next year's defensive line, if everything holds as we're expecting it to right now, is going to be still one of the best defensive lines in the Big Ten and one of the better defensive lines in the entire country, in my opinion. Especially, you know, you got four veterans now in the middle with uh, Beeman, Ellie's, Izzard, uh, and mm -hmm. Zane Durand, who's now entering his junior season. And then after that, you have Jordan Vandenberg, uh, Caleb Artis, uh, Devon Townley as well, not to mention some others. And then, you know, we, we talked about the defensive ends there briefly, but uh, they have tremendous upside in denying Dennis Suns. This Dennis Sutton and uh, <laughs> Jamil Lyons. I mean, it'll be an exciting defensive line to watch next season for Penn State, despite losing uh, two guys in Chop Robinson and Deese Isaac, who are probably going to be top 60. Well, Chop will be a top, you know, 30 draft Whatever. pick. Yeah. And Adisa Isaac is probably going to, I would imagine, go second or third round as well. 
Yeah, I'm going to pray for our uh, the announcing crew over at Penn State because those are a lot of tough names today. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, mm-hmm. But, yeah, just to finish that up, uh, yeah, those two are turning absolutely huge for Penn State. I, you can argue that they wouldn't be able to have gone into the transfer portal and got as good as got two players as good as those two. Ellie's amazing that we're saying that because he was kind of a question mark heading into this into the twenty twenty three season about what he would be able to provide. But he was one of Penn State's best defensive players all season. He created, you know, he, he was a nice stable force in the middle of that defensive line uh, along with all of them but Ellers was really impressive this past year so very mm-hmm. intrigued to see if he even has another step in him uh, that he can take and uh, you know based off this year he would have had maybe a chance to end up in the NFL he'll end up in the NFL but now he'll have a chance to raise his draft stock even more yeah for a unit that was definitely coming into 2023 as a question mark um, I think they proved themselves more more than enough for themselves yep. And Absolutely. they're going to be a pretty good unit again next year with two uh, six-year guys starting and a couple of veterans behind them. So yep. good year, good yep. year for a uh, good offseason so far for Penn State. But I uh, just added A.J. Harris, added um, a kicker also, I forgot about that, and Chase Meyer. Um, potentially adding a five-star lineman, added a five-star receiver. Have Tony Grimes on campus who we didn't even mention. Um, yeah, we'll see how that one goes. He's visiting Michigan State on Saturday. Mm-hmm. A decision could be coming, I, I would guess, in, in the upcoming days from him. But we'll see yeah. how that one goes. Yeah, definitely interesting stuff for Penn State. And if you guys aren't already tuned in, um, all this information was on the Lions Den Forum on PennState.Rivals.com. Our, it's our premium forum. That's where we post all our info, all our scoops and everything. Um, like you mentioned before, we had the A.J. Harris thing pretty early. We had the Rucci thing pretty early. We had the, Most of these we've had pretty early. Um, so we've done a pretty good job with the recruiting info. And if you guys want to check it out, um, PennState.Rivals.com, uh, HVI Happy Valley Insider, HVI30 is a promo code. Take it, take advantage of it. You get a free 30-day trial. If you don't like it, just cancel. I highly doubt you're going to because once you get in there, you're kind of sucked in for life, it seems like almost. But, uh, Absolutely. Um, yeah, so. Um, active board as well. And, yeah. You know, we, we, we've been providing uh, quite a bit of transfer portal updates over the last few days. Uh, I know it was quiet for most of January, but I mean, you look at it, Penn State, it really had no time to really get into the portal and address those needs. Plus, they didn't really mm-hmm. know what they were going to need until they figured out who was declaring for the draft and whatnot. But, uh, you know, now now in this short time period, they're, they're, they're being very active. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I would even sit and tell, you know, Penn State fans, you know, if they don't land another wide receiver in this uh, portion of the calendar, they still have the spring transfer portal window to get guys on campus to pick up commitments there as well. More kids are going to enter, more players are going to enter, enter the portal uh, there in April as well. So there's going to still be time f- to add on to some of these spots like wide receiver where Penn State mm-hmm. probably wants to add on top of, you know, picking up Julian Fluck. Yeah, I, I didn't even mention uh, LeJonte Wester is also on campus yeah. from Florida Atlantic. Another guy yeah, he, I completely forgot yeah. about. Um, just a quick little tidbit on him before we sign off. Yeah, they had him on campus. We'll see how that one goes. There's uh, quite a few big-name players on there. Ohio State is going to visit from him. Colorado, mm-hmm. I believe, may be going to visit. Uh, but Colorado is also where his brother is playing. So one would have to imagine that Definitely the helps. Buffaloes have a good shot there. But, yeah, we'll see what how that one goes. Uh, there are, like I said, a couple big-time programs involved there so it, it could be a tougher one to win but again if, if they don't land wester they still have the spring to add on to that roster uh with the second transporter window yeah for sure this roster is far from done and they're going to lose some people too because they're currently looking at 96 scholarship players which is obviously not allowed um you got to stop at 85 but you don't have to get to that 85 mark till game number yeah. one august 31st first west yeah. virginia and you know we're sitting here recording this uh january 6th two days after penn state's official transfer portal window closed mm-hmm. so it does not sound like we're going to see any more players uh leave for the transfer portal right now but i'm sure after the spring practices are involved uh, sorry, after spring practices are completed, we'll see uh, a couple more Nittany Lions and the transfer portal. Uh, there's still a couple guys we're waiting for if they decide to go pro. 
primarily wide receiver Keandre Lambert Smith. Uh, yeah. But um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see more roster movement in the spring for sure. Uh, like you said, because they're quite a bit over the uh, scholarship limit there. Uh, they got honestly yeah. time until next fall to get that, you know, uh, worked. But uh, definitely gonna see some uh, attrition here in the spring. Yeah, for sure. But uh, for me and Dylan, that's another episode of the Penn State 365 podcast signing off.